What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome to my rigging station, and welcome back to Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. Really awesome topic we're going to talk about today, deep water jigging, okay? And I want to just kind of remind everybody, you know, the, the concept between Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus here and these, you know, weekly seminars, it's really to shorten the learning curve. You know, pay attention to the details. I'm telling you straight up exactly what the scoop is. Um, you know, I'm not saying my way is the best way. Look, if something is working for you, by all means, stick with it. Share it with me because I want to catch more too. But I spend a lot of time offshore and with my lifetime of experience, I feel like I've got a lot of really great tips that can help you be a more successful angler. So when it comes to deep water jigging, let's get right into this right now because there is so much to talk about. Look, First, you have to decide, why am I doing this, right? Because traditionally, when we fish deep water, and when I say deep water, I'm referring to, oh God, anything at least four to 500 feet on the shallow side, and maybe 1,200, maybe even a little bit deeper, okay, on, on the upside. Um, but for the most part, seven to 900, you know, that's that window, seven to 900, where a lot of different species thrive, and it gives us just a tremendous amount of opportunity. Now, this is applicable almost around the entire state of Florida. You know, may it be up in the Tri-County area of Broward, Palm Beach, Dade, you know, fishing way offshore for the black belly rose fish or the golden tile fish, which has become a really, you know, uh, important target for deep water jig fishermen in that area. It could be for guys down here in the Keys like me, where I really enjoy going offshore, deep dropping, but adding this whole new element of deep water jigging for the tile fish, snowy groupers, yellow edge groupers, queen snappers, barrel fish, all sorts of targets down here. And of course, you've got the Gulf of Mexico, a mecca of deep water fishing. When you get out to areas like Pulley Ridge, Rankin Ridge, etc., Howell Hook, there's just tremendous deep water fishing out there. Over the years, it's all been done electric rods and reels, you know, power assist equipment. It really all started with the Daiwa Tanacoms. That's kind of where it, you know, kind of blew up, so to speak, where everything downsized and got easier and lighter and more portable, more powerful in a small little machine. And then, of course, it, it expanded from there, and there's a variety of different brands. Right now, when it comes to the power assist reels, the Shimano Beastmasters just blow everything else away for numerous reasons, but that's not what this is about right here. We're talking, again, about deep water jigging. Okay, this is all manual fishing. Yes, there are power assist reels out there that have a jig feature where you literally can drop your jig to the bottom, push a button, and the reel automatically retrieves and drops the jig and retrieves and drops the jig. And when you want to, you know, retrieve the jig all the way back to the boat, you can simply push a button just like a power assist Beastmaster and retrieve that jig all the way back to the boat. Certainly there are uses for that. You know, there are guys whatever. There are anglers that might not have that strength to do it manually. You know, a lot of different variables, but I want to stress that's not what we're talking about today. I'm not really into that stuff. I'm into the manual, hand crank, deep water jigging, man style, okay? And no, it's not always easy, and yeah, there's complications, and yes, there's obstacles, but the rewards are absolutely incredible. I understand though that, you know, you obviously, if you're focused on deep water jigging, you've got to be in an area where the target species is present. So regardless if you're shooting over to the Bahamas or wherever it is, all of the locations that we talked about, the, region, the regions, you need to put yourself in a position where you could catch fish because nobody wants to go out there, drop a jig seven, eight, nine hundred feet and not get bit right? And then have to crank it all the way back up to the boat for nothing and do that over and over. You're not going to last very long. I'm telling you right now, I don't care how much of a hot shot you think you are. There's only a very small number of anglers that are so dialed in that can consistently jig in deep water for lengthy periods of times. So it's all about balance and we're going to talk more about it. Um, certainly it can be done, but there's just a small number of us that can do that. Uh, so, of course, you want to put yourself in areas, like I said, where the fish are going to be structure, ledges, drop-offs, 
muddy plateaus for the tilefish because we know they like those muddy plateaus. Uh, Low-lying rock and rubble exposed out of the bottom is going to hold all sorts of crabs and critters in there. And your groupers, also your tilefish will be feeding in that region. Larger slopes and hills and seamounts, submerged seamounts, that's where you're going to find your barrel fish, your queen snapper. Um, so lots of different forms of structure, right? And typically speaking, the guy that's going to go deep water jigging, this isn't your first fishing trip, right? You don't wake up and go, hey, I'm going to go deep water jigging out in 800 feet. Just doesn't work like that at all. You've worked your way up to this level. So you understand the fundamentals. You've been out there deep dropping. You understand what you need to look for. You know all of these things, okay? And if you don't, you certainly should get dialed in before you even consider deep water jigging because all of those fundamentals are vital for getting you in the game, keeping you hooked up. You know, you've got to understand how to read the bottom on your machine, you know, you've got to understand how to position the boat adjacent to the structure that you want to fish. All of those elements that you would be doing when you're using power assist equipment and the electric reels are all the same when you're jigging. Okay, they're all the same because, of course, you want to get your bait into that strike zone for a maximum period of time. That's the key. Remember that the longer my jig is in that strike zone, which is on or near the bottom, within 50 feet of the bottom. I'll tell you right now, within 50 feet. Sometimes it's within five feet of the bottom. But the queens, they'll come up off the bottom. The barrel fish, they'll come up off the bottom. So jigging within that 50-foot zone on or near the bottom is exactly where you need to be. And once your jig exits that strike zone, you're losing valuable time, you're wasting valuable time, you're potentially risking hooking other fish like almacos and AJs and stuff that you really don't want to jig. They're a lot of fun to catch, great practice, great battles, but not really prized fish, right? Like the groupers and snappers. So try and keep that jig, like I said, on or near the bottom. And we have to know how to do that. We have to have situational awareness. We have to understand where that bottom is. And like I said earlier, this isn't your first rodeo, you know. You know all of these things if you've decided to go out and deep water jig. Traditionally, we have jigged, hang on. Using, you know, six foot three rods rated for 150 to 400 gram jigs matched to Oshia Jigger 2000 size reels loaded with 30 pound diamond braid, 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's our go to outfit right there for a majority of the jig fishing that we do in up to 400, 450 feet of water with, a, you know, one to two knots of current at the very most, we can get away with this outfit. And you can catch really, really big fish with this outfit. But again, we're talking about pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits, going deeper, going further, targeting bigger fish, you know, and more exotic fish. So you really have to step up your tackle. But before we get into that, again, I'm going to kind of just back up a little bit and make sure that we're on the right track here, you and I, and that we're really talk you through this entire scenario step by step so you too could go out there and be a successful deep water jig fisherman. Hey so it all starts with location, of course. And like we said earlier, obviously you're going to put yourself in a position where you know the target species are there. And those target species are going to vary because of various factors. Open and closed seasons. Look, right now here in the Keys, no matter how much I want to go out there and do some deep water jigging for groupers, it just doesn't make sense. Why would I hook and land snowy groupers and yellow edge groupers that are now have bower trauma, they're bloated, trying to release, it just doesn't make sense, right? We're just killing fish for no reason, feeding them to the sharks at best. So it just doesn't make sense. So obviously we gear our deep dropping or our deep water jigging toward open seasons and things to that nature, which you need to take into consideration as well. But you've decided, let's do it. You went out there with your power assist equipment. You know, maybe you're on a headboat like the Yankee Captains, absolutely famous, sails out of Key West. 
They'll put you on the deep water jig bite. Let me tell you that right now. Great option if you don't have your own boat. Or if you don't have a buddy with a boat that's going to get you out there. If you're not traveling to the Bahamas where you could deep water jig for, you know, groupers, various snappers, including the queen snapper there as well. But if you don't have those other options in place, then certainly the head boat option is better than sitting on land because you're never going to catch them on the couch. So remember that. So you've got your power assist equipment. Some people look, they'll take both. They'll take the power assist equipment and they'll take the jigging outfits and they'll alternate. Personally, I like just the deep water jigging. I like that challenge. I'm not trying to catch three fish at a time. Yeah, there are times when I'll go do deep drop trips with the power assist equipment, of course. But the reward of the deep water jigging is just really, really awesome and supersedes any other way for me to fish out there. But definitely, I'm going to go out with both because you don't know what conditions you're going to face. You may be having a raging current, a lot of different factors. So it's always a good idea to be well prepared. I stress that in all of my seminars, and I'm going to stress it here too. Uh, because again, you just don't know. And also understand when you're out there, don't lose sight of the fact that you're in dolphin territory, right? So make sure you have a couple of spinners. So maybe a jig or a lure, or a popper, something you could throw at fish that might pop up, and maybe something with a hook that you can just drift out of squid. Um, just don't lose sight of the fact that you are in that dolphin range. And I'll tell you what, nobody you know has a problem catching dolphin. It's just a great little addition to the deep water jigging. Okay, but again, different seminar altogether. Let's get right back to it here. First. You know, we got out there, time of the year is okay. It doesn't matter. You can go out deep water jigging any time of the year, conditions permitting. And of course, winter time, we obviously have to look out for fronts and weather. Um, and you don't want to be out there deep water jigging in 10 foot seas. That's obviously not feasible and not comfortable and doesn't make sense. It's so windy, the boat's drifting so fast. So ideal conditions could be calm to moderate seas, okay? Daytime. Dawn to dusk, you're not going to be deep water jigging in the dark. The fish just don't respond in the dark. The blackfin tunas do, but the bottom dwellers just don't respond to the deep water jigs at night as well as they do during the daytime. The more light it is, the brighter it is, the sunnier it is, the more effective you're going to be. More of that light penetrates the deep, dark depths, and you tend to have better action. When it's cloudy or overcast, that deep water bite could struggle a little bit. Not to say it's going to be dismal, but it may not be as fired up as when that sun is high and bright in the sky and blue skies, you know. So, and remember, light will penetrate that deep, even though it's very dark. You know, we're talking about five, seven, nine hundred feet, and it is pitch black. Some light does penetrate down there, but it really doesn't matter because these fish. They're adapted to hunt in that environment, okay? They know how to feed on crabs, finfish, crustaceans, squid, everything, shrimp, down, eels. It just goes on and on that deep down there, okay? They can do it without any light whatsoever in those cold depths. That water down there is in the 40s. I mean, it's cold depending on, you know, of course, how deep you get, 40s, 50s, maybe even colder. So... What an incredible predator that can thrive and live in such a hostile environment and feed down there. So to be able to go out there and fool that fish in any method is certainly exciting. But to do it jigging is really, really incredible. So we get out there. We know we want a deep water jig, daylight hours, any day of the year, conditions permitting, uh, 500 to 900 feet, seven or 800 feet, of course, areas of structure, areas that are likely to hold the fish that you're targeting. Maybe you've been there before, you've caught them on the power assist equipment, you know, so we've set the stage. That's what we've done right up until now. We've set that stage so you know where you're at. You're virtually out there. Go, you know, work with me. You're virtually out there on the boat right now. You, you know, you know that there's some snappers, groupers, tile fish, whatever. Okay, you've watched them come up, and now it's time to start jigging. 
the tackle. This is so important, perhaps the most important part of the entire equation. And I'm going to go through my tackle selection with you step by step from the reel, the line, the leader, the connections, all the way down to my choice of jig. Um, and then we're going to talk about jigging methods and some other factors as well, okay? And understand that there's so many people that are doing this. Everybody has a different point of view. Um, everybody has a different logic at to, as to what might be important to them, okay? And I suggest, you know, and encourage you to listen to everybody, you know, get in on the game, listen to seminars, talk to other guys who are experienced in this, and form your own opinions, you know, based on experience, what's best for you. What I've decided on is after many, many years of experience and, I don't know, countless hours jigging in deep water, I've designed and fine-tuned my equipment to be perfect for me. And I found other people who use this to agree uh, that it's perfect for them as well. But again, I don't want you to think that this is your only option um, because there are a lot of them from a lot of different manufacturers, different strengths, different lengths, different classes, different materials. Um, but once again, I can't speak for all of that stuff. All I can talk about is my gear and why I chose what I did and why I'm so effective, I believe, and you know, with this equipment. For starters is the overall package. The overall package is incredibly light. And understand, look, I mean, it's like it almost weighs nothing, nothing. That's so important. Every single ounce matters when you're deep water jigging. You're physically holding that rod for a long time. There may or may not be a rail, depending on the boat that you're fishing. You know, a lot of different options there, but the lighter that that rod and reel combo is in your hands, the more effective you're going to be, the more comfortable you're going to be, the less fatigue that's going to set in. So this is absolutely no place for a heavy rod and reel. Okay, very, very light. In my particular case, we're going to start with the rod. This is a rod that I custom designed specifically for deep water jig fishing. Okay, specifically for that 500 to 1,000 foot range, it can handle almost anything but more importantly, relatively heavy jigs in the 500 to 800 gram range, okay? But the rod still is incredibly light. This is a Cape Cod black hole blank um, Torre carbon fiber, incredibly responsive and powerful, parabolic, but so light, I can't stress it. The rod itself weighs almost nothing. I particularly measured or placed the real seat, uh, the foregrip, the butt section, the whole aft section of the rod, you know, everything back here. And I'm going to kind of just see if I could slide this over so you can get a little bit of a better look at it. Okay. You can see it's got a relatively large foregrip because sometimes there will be times when I'm grabbing that handle just like that. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times my hand is under the reel. Okay, grasp, grasping the reel, but there's a lot of times when I'm bringing up a big fish that my hand is right there on that foregrip. So I need a foregrip. I don't want something really tiny, like a little knob or whatever right there. I want that foregrip. The length is perfect for me. I can stick the rod in my gut if I needed to, to crank under my arm, perfect triangulation right in the pit. My hand is here. My right hand is on the reel. Okay, I've got a perfect triangulation and it can feel everything. So it's the right size for me, okay? And again, anybody who's fished this outfit, it, it fits for them as well. The real seat, graphite, Fuji graphite, very, very light. Again, very strong, but very light. Every factor was taken into consideration to reduce weight. Because again, at the end of the day, anybody can drop a jig one time. Work it and reel it back up. But do that for 10 hours straight. 10 hours, dawn to dusk, jigging in no less than five to 700 feet of water and depths exceeding 1,000 feet of water. When you can do that, then you're there, okay? But in order to get there, it all has to start somewhere. And again, it starts with that tackle. The length of the rod is very important for me because, again, you can see I'm 
six two, it's seven, seven foot. I couldn't find the actual blank and the correct action that I was looking for, so I actually found the correct seven foot six blank, and I cut six inches off the butt section in order to give me the length and the action that I was looking for. So this really is a fully custom rod built by Chaos. Um, they know it well. It's Captain Mike's deep water jigging rod, and uh, you know might be something that you might want to look into. The guides. Acid wrapped or spiral wrapped, depending on how you would like to call it, meaning they start at the top right here. Okay, I'll show that to you. They start right here at the top of the reel, but watch what happens as I work my way back. They start to rotate, continue to rotate a full 180 degrees until they're right here on the bottom of the blank. So starts on the top ends on the bottom. Numerous benefits, prevents, it helps prevent the rod from twisting in your hands. Uh, it prevents the braid, no matter how much load the rod is under, from ever touching the blank. So you're protecting that fragile braid, even though it's incredibly strong. Once it gets damaged and those fibers, you know, weaken, it's zing pow every time. So it's protecting the braid. But also you can see that mono coming off the tip. We'll see if we can kind of show that to you. When I'm jigging and working that jig, oftentimes that mono ends up on the top of the blank, kind of like that. We'll just kind of call it. It wraps on the top of the blank when you're, you know, working that jig. And if the guides were on the top of the blank, you would constantly be fouling your line and snagging your rod tip and it would just be a nightmare. So by the guides being on the bottom, that line just slides right off the top of the blank. Just, you know, I know it's kind of hard to see there, but you could follow me and understand me because you understand the fundamentals of fishing. Like I said, that line will just roll right off the top of the blank. That's the rod. It's light, very springy and parabolic, so I can work it that way, but if I want to sweep the jig, which I do a lot, we're going to talk about motion in a couple of minutes here. I sweep that jig. It gives me a large arch, nice large arch, okay, from, you know, close. I could hold it down toward the surface and go straight up almost over my head. That's a long arch where that jig can then flutter and fall and do what it needs to do as I pitch that jig. A shorter rod wouldn't give you that same arch, so I'm going to get more coverage, more bites, and more fish in the boat. Okay, now the reel. Let's talk about that. Even though the rod is vital, the reel is equally, if not more important. Oshia Jigger 4000. I'm telling you right now, this is the absolute peak of jigging reel performance right here. I've never used another conventional fishing reel that I have been as impressed with as this Oshia Jigger 4000. I'm not just talking it up. I'm telling you that this is a very, very special machine. It was engineered specifically for this purpose. Deep order jigging, heavy jigs. What's the most important factor? Well, there are numerous factors. Let's discuss them and you'll understand why each is so important. First, how light it is. Remember what we said about the rod. The rod could be feather light, but if the reel is heavy as shit, then what do you got? Nothing. So again, the reel needs to be as light I don't want to say as light as the rod, but it needs to be as light as possible. And they've done that. I don't know off the top of my head what it weighs. I don't care. All I know is it's light for its size. Big, big star drag. Look at the size of that star drag right there. Huge. Okay, but very easy to adjust at any time. Small little increments. Okay, very smooth and easy to adjust. You can't mess up. You can't mess up, okay? So again, that really, and I just, when my handle, hand is on the handle, I could still reach with my thumb. I mean, it's just such a great setup with the big handle, the big cranking power, and that large star. It truly is an incredible workhorse. Torque. The torque. Look, we're fishing heavy jigs, approaching two pounds, sometimes even more. That's a two-pound lead. Think about it that way, that you're dropping to the bottom, working and retrieving over and over and over. The more that I feel it here, right here, the more that I feel it in my reel and in my hand and in my arm, 
the more fatigue that I'm going to get and the harder it's going to be to continue to jig. So, of course, I'm just not going to be as effective. With all of this torque, you practically don't even feel the jig. That's so important. I'm telling you, you practically don't even feel it. All you're doing is just finding a steady pace. Don't overdo it. Don't try and be, you know, the road runner. Just slow it down. Find a steady pace and just crank. Okay, just crank, 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 crank. And you'd be surprised how quickly you're going to retrieve that heavy jig from the bottom with no fatigue at all. That's perhaps the most important part of this reel is that torque. Okay, it's absolutely incredible. Additionally, line capacity. Okay, full reel. Keep it full because you want as much line on the reel as possible. Deep water jigging, I'm fishing 20-pound diamond braid. This is the yard line. You don't need the yard line segmented in colors. It just so happens to be on here. Not for this application, although it could help in various scenarios. Um, but the bottom line is that the reel is full. I want to maintain as much line on the reel, regardless of what depth I'm fishing. Because the more line that's on the spool, the more line that I'm retrieving with every crank, and the quicker that I'm getting that jig back up to the boat. So I'm just a more efficient angler. Okay, that's the bottom line. If the reel was half full, I'd have to turn many more times. And while one turn doesn't seem like a big difference, a hundred turns a thousand times a day is just a ridiculous distance that you're reeling that you don't need to. So keep that reel full. Very, very important. The reel automatically engages. I'm dropping my jig to the bottom. It's deep. I'm dropping, 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 and I'm monitoring it, and I have situational awareness. I have jig awareness. I know where the bottom is. I know where my jig is in relation to the bottom. These are very, very important factors that you must get dialed in to be an effective deep water jig fisherman. Situational awareness. Jig awareness, okay? Understand at all times. When you get a bite and I say, hey, how deep was that fish? Or how far off the bottom? You should at least have a general idea. You need to do that to be an effective deep water jig fisherman. When that jig is falling and when that jig is fluttering and shooting to the bottom, sometimes it'll go fast. It, again, depends on the jig and the different scenarios. But oftentimes, a fish will grab it and pick it off and you'll go slack. Okay, and suddenly, you know, you're like, whoa, slack. All I got to do is just crank. Look at that. I don't have to push the lever. I just have to, here, I'm in free spool. Look, I'll show you. I'm free spool right here. Okay, my jig is falling, 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 go slack. Boom. I'm back into gear. In a split second, there's no fumbling, nothing. And my hand is on the reel. So it's just instant. It's second nature. And that, again, is going to just make me a more successful angler Okay, it's going to allow me to just be a little bit more efficient on the drop. It's going to allow me to be a little bit more efficient once my jig hits the bottom. I don't have to, again, lock it back up. Okay, I've got the magnetic knob, which controls the speed. That line will come off the reel. These are all adjustable you know, features that were designed to be adjustable because they vary under certain scenarios. A lighter jig, you can back it off a little bit. A heavier jig, you can tighten it up a little bit. So again, you'll get a feel for that. The reel, the Oshia Jigger 4000, coupled to Captain Mike's Deep Water Chaos Jigging Rod with the 20-pound diamond braid is an absolutely deadly combination. Okay, It took years to fine-tune this setup. Okay, it's, It didn't just happen. It's not random. It's trial and error. And once again... I'm really trying to get you zeroed in. The 20 pound rather than the 30 pound on the braid is important because of its diameter. It's ultra thin. And it allows me to fish lighter jigs or even get my jig to the bottom quicker with less drag in the water. That's so important for deep water jigging. When you're fishing 100 feet, it's maybe not as important. When you're fishing 800 feet in two knots of current, Every speck that's in the water is creating drag. So the thinner that that braid is, the more effective of a fisherman I'm going to be, the more sensitive I'm going to be, the more jig awareness I'm going to have, the more situational awareness I'm going to have, 
And again, I'm going to outfish you 10 to 1 because of this outfit. Okay, keep that in mind. Some guys will even scale it down. You've got the real specialist 15, 16 pound line. I don't know. I don't need to go that light. Okay, 20 is the perfect balance for me. But I have to stress it's got to be fresh. Don't let that braid get damaged in any way because if it does, you risk losing fish. The leader. I go with 50 pound. I go with 50 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon, okay? Generally in the shallow water, I might go with, as I mentioned, 40 pound presentation fluorocarbon, but in the deeper water, I step it up to 50. I connect that 50 pound leader, that top shot, which is about 25 feet long, and I'm going to kind of show that to you, with an Alberto knot. I'm hoping I can kind of dictate this to you right on my finger. Look how small that little Alberto knot is. So streamlined right there. Very, very small and streamlined. You know, again, there's nothing that's going to create any unnecessary drag. I don't have any unnecessary terminal tackle on here that I don't need. But it's a bulletproof connection. That Alberto knot is excellent. The FG knot is also excellent. Um, depending on your preference, I have found the Alberto to be as easy as possible to tie once you've mastered it, and it's perfect. Every time I catch a fish, I'm feeling that leader right there for frays, nicks, abrasions. If anything doesn't feel 100%, I'm snipping it and retying. And I can do that multiple times. I've got a 25 foot long top shot. That top shot, the fluorocarbon, the 50 pound, is not only stealthy, Okay, it's abrasion resistant, stealthy, but of course it has some elasticity, some stretch. And because the braid itself does not, that leader needs to have some of that elasticity. And combined with the springy, the parabolic action of the rod, that's going to help you, you know, here, that's going to help you absorb sudden loads, head shakes, fish racing back toward the bottom. So it's that combination that's going to prevent pulled hooks. It's that 50-pound fluorocarbon leader coupled with the spongy, springy rod, so to speak. Okay, It's got plenty of backbone back here, so I can fight and land big fish, but look how much of that is absorbed right there. And that's, that's very important. Okay, That's the setup. That's the reel, the rod, the line, the leader, the connection. The only thing left to talk about is the jigs. All right, let's talk about the jigs, right? Because I'm telling you what, very, very important. Again, million options out there, countless options. I'm going to show you the two jigs. Let me just cut this off of here. Stand by. Really want to kind of get it up close and give you an opportunity to really take a close look at this. So this is a 500 gram jig. It's called the Mobster. It's a three-sided jig. I have had absolute awesome success with this jig in shallower water in the 250 gram size. Uh, so offshore, I stepped it up to the 500 gram size. And I'll tell you what, magic, magic right there. Mimics a wounded bait fish, primarily a ballyhoo, maybe a flying fish, something long, shimmering, Okay. The jig itself has a little bit of glow right across the top. The rest of it is just a shimmering, metallic-y pattern, scaly pattern. It's got some glow eyes, too. Okay, So it has some glow accents, but the whole thing is not a glow-in-the-dark jig. doesn't need to be. Big hooks, 7-0 assist hooks, a little bit of glow on there as well, just for a little bit of extra pizzazz. Okay, I Look how it's rigged. You've got the assist hooks on a split ring, the split ring to the ring on the top of the jig. There's a small welded solid ring right there. That's where we tie our leader to with an improved clinch knot. That's it right there, just a fisherman's knot right to that little solid ring. And the bottom is the same split ring holding the assist hooks to the jig itself. Look, balance. I don't need a 500 pound split ring right there. Okay, or right there, it's all about balance as far as size and strength, balance. It all works with the tackle. This is a phenomenal jig, 
for queen snappers. This is really for anything. Blackfin tunas will eat this off the bottom. Again, it mimics a bait fish. You can get this at jigsrrust.com. Tell them Captain Mike sent you, and I promise you that they will ship you these jigs rigged and ready to fish with the right hooks, the right rings. All you got to do is tie it on and fish it. Again, jigsrrust.com. So that's my number one jig. I don't want to say my number one. That's half the time I'm fishing that 500 gram jig right there. And having success with it, I wanted to see, you know, yeah, I'm going to keep fishing it, but is there something even better? Is there something that's even more effective? And I thought about it very carefully and I realized, you know, bait fish patterns are deadly effective in all depths, but what are these fish primarily feeding on offshore? What are these snappers and groupers and tile fish and barrel fish, squid? Squid, they're feeding on squid. That is their absolute number one forage. So what I wanted to do was kind of mimic that number one forage species and see if that would make a difference, which it has. So I've since transitioned. And while that Mobster 500 is an absolutely fantastic jig and it's still in my arsenal, the one my go-to now, the one that you'll see me pick up and drop almost every time, is an all-new jig called the Enforcer. Okay, the Enforcer, it's a 400-gram jig, but hopefully you could see that. Look at the shape of that jig, all of those crazy odd lines right there. It's got almost like a star pattern. You know, again, uh, hopefully that all really translates really well, okay, on, on the camera here. But look at the shape of the jig. It perfectly mimics a squid. And the color. Most people make the mistake. They think squid are white. Dead squid are white. Live squid are all sorts of colors, including that right there. Golds, oranges. They have the ability to change color, right? I mean, it's crazy what they can do. And all of that glitter. All of that glow, there's some glow lines right there. I'm telling you, a little bit of flash also. Not much, just a little. Absolutely killer. But more importantly is the action of this jig. While the Mobster 500, being a bait fish pattern that I like to work a little bit more erratically with short sweeps and short pitches and let it flutter and shoot off to the side, I have found with the Enforcer, with the with the jig that mimics the squid, it's more about long sweeps. It's not the short, you know, pumps and using the handle. I found I can hit the bottom with that jig, lock it up, and literally just sweep it, okay? And when you're coming up, it darts off, and then it flutters and swims on its own. I'm telling you, crazy action on the Enforcer, perfectly mimics a squid. It's my deep water jig. It's my go-to deep water jig. And I'm not fishing anything else. I've narrowed it down. That's it. Those are the two lures, the two jigs that you're going to see. If you fish with me, offshore, deep order, jigging, these are going to be your two options. Both from Jigs R Us. I, I want to remind you, if you do order any from them, not that this is a spot for them, but just make sure you mention Captain Mike, Florida Sport Fishing TV, and they'll be sure to ship you all of your jigs rigged and ready to fish, which was a nice feature, okay? Nevertheless, that's it. The Mobster 500, the Enforcer 400, and that's my favorite. And because I'm fishing it on such a light rod, with such a light line, I can get away with that 400 gram size in almost a thousand feet of water, almost to a thousand feet of water with up to even two knots of current. So it just reduces my overall signature tremendously, okay, but catches everything. It's absolutely deadly. It really, really is. So look, there's a little bit more to it. You sweep that jig. Boom, you're tight, you're hooked up. Immediately, you know, don't do this. Don't start swinging back like crazy, just reel. Just get tight. Get tight on that reel, hold the rod out in front of you, and just start cranking and fighting that fish. And I'll tell you what, if you do it right, pace yourself. 
If you pace yourself throughout the day, you find that rhythm, okay? Don't overstress yourself. Don't exhaust your arm. You can do this. You can do it for long periods of time with the right tackle, the right gear, and you're going to be ultra successful. And it's such an incredibly rewarding way to fish. Deep water jigging, okay? And I encourage you, you know, stay tuned because episodes of Florida Sport Fishing TV, new episodes, our 2023 season is about to launch. You're going to have access to all of those episodes first, one at a time, before they even make it to television. They're going to be right here as one of the benefits on Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. And I encourage you to watch them all. And there are shows on deep water jigging, which is what I want to stress. Way offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, and I want you to pay attention, watch what's happening. We talk about jigs, we talk about jigging techniques, we talk about fighting fish, and we show it all to you. So lots of great stuff coming up there, okay? Uh, with that being said, stand by. We've got another seminar coming up before Thanksgiving. And I'll tell you what, hopefully this wind lays down soon. We're down here in the Keys. Looks like the next three days are a wash. We're not getting off short. Um, but after that, with this little front that's coming through, hopefully this Wahoo bite will just blow wide open. So I'll see you on the water.